Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady where I help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday. And when you tune into my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. But today's special edition is all the tea on Donald Trump and these taxes and him only paying $750. And so, um, I want to, let me make sure everything is um, going all right. Okay. So I want to start out by saying a couple of things that um, being nasty to your tax people because of this stuff is absolutely uncalled for. I have seen some people come for some of my tax peep friends as we try to explain these things to you and be rude and nasty. And that is unacceptable. Okay. So whether or not you like what we have to say, that is completely up to you. But that's no cause to be rude, okay? And and I get it. You know, it's um, it's a very emotional thing because you know, on the surface, it looks like something shady is being done. But again, um, it's just not. Uh, it's it's no cause to be nasty to people. Is all I'm saying. Okay. So um, let's get started. So the New York Times published an article, and after I get done, I'll go back and link the article. Uh, so you know for you, but published an article regarding Donald Trump's taxes, which has been a topic of discussion since at least the 2016 um, presidential election and the debate. And so somehow the New York Times has gotten a hold of these taxes and they published what is a very lengthy article uh, about it. And I spent my morning reading it. Um, so let's cut, let me get a couple of definitions out of the way that um, I want to, for some reason, I can't see your comments. Sorry. So let's get some definitions out of the way that I want people to really um, to take note of. First is the difference between revenue and profit. OK, just because someone is making a million dollars doesn't mean they're profiting a million dollars. OK, that is something that. Um, you need to recognize and you know a lot of times especially these internet streets we hear people talking about being um, a six-figure earner hold on a minute guys sorry about that okay so um, you know you hear people online talking about being a six-figure earner being a six-figure earner is great but if you earn in six figures and losing seven that's not so great you know what I mean so um, so that's the first thing, revenue versus profit. The second is avoidance versus tax evasion. Tax avoidance is legal. Tax evasion is not. Tax avoidance are things such as taking tax deductions, right? So when you itemize your tax deductions, that's tax avoidance. Tax evasion is when you're like not reporting income or hiding money or you owe taxes, you know it, you just refuse to flat out pay it. That is tax evasion and that's legal illegal sorry tax evasion is illegal and then I want to talk about the importance of tax planning right because a lot of times um, you know again in these in these streets we're all DIYers right we, we don't need to hire tax professionals I can just go Google this and that and the other okay but when you have a team of tax professionals or accountants that are on your team this is where tax planning is uh, is is crucial. So just as an example, one simple tax planning tip is, hey, you who have a teenager that's turning 17, guess what? Your tax bill is going to go up by $1,500. So you're going to need to do something. That is a basic tax planning thing. Or if you know that you are, your family is going to grow by a new baby, in the coming year, then that is tax planning. Perhaps you can have more money coming home in your paycheck versus, you know, withholding at a different rate. So those are tax planning type things on a basic level. OK, and that's there's all of that in this. The other definition I want to talk about is a net operating loss. So a net net operating loss is just that a company loses money now pre TCJA, so pre-2017, 
a company who posted a net operating loss could carry that loss back two years and possibly get a refund and then carry it forward another 18. Or if there's no way to carry it back the two years, carry it forward for 20. That was pre-TCJA. And you could offset up to 100% of your profits in this business. Now, with TCJA, that tweaked it a little bit. Then here comes COVID. They put the old thing back. So yeah, but that's that's the basics of a net operating loss. So that is what is at play here in all of this stuff. So, you know, the main question on people's minds is, did Donald Trump commit tax evasion? Unless you see the tax returns and you have the documentation to prove or disprove anything, there is no way to know if he committed tax evasion. Plain and simple. So you can't tell just by the fact that he paid $750 that he committed tax evasion. That is simply not true, a false statement. And any professional worth their weight in salt will not subscribe to that type of language. And this is why I tell you that we come on here, we, we're not gonna tell you what you wanna hear, we're gonna tell you the tax law, okay? It's not political, it's not personal, it's tax law, okay? So the headline of this um, article says, long concealed records show Trump's chronic losses and years of tax avoidance, okay? And so as I peruse this, whoo, the losses are absolutely bananas, okay? So I talked about this during the, um, during the election in the 90s, he posted nearly a billion dollar loss. I think it was like 915 million. After a while, boo, that's a billion dollars, okay? That couple, that 85,000 or whatever, that ain't even gonna make a difference, but almost a billion dollars. So tax planning would say, hey, we can go back and get some money, and then we're gonna carry this loss forward and make sure that you're keeping your profit so that you stretch this loss out for as long as possible. You have a span of 20 years, right? So who would not do that, okay? So um, so here we go. So in the beginning, it talks about, you know, the public um, filings. This, Lord, this thing is so thick, y'all. All right. And so when it says in the, the public uh, the public filings offered a distorted picture of Donald Trump's financial state. And because they report revenue, they don't report profit. So in 2018, Donald Trump announced in his disclosure that he made at least $434.9 million, but the tax records show that he reported $47.4 million in losses. So making $400 million sounds great, but it sounds like he lost almost 48 million. Suddenly that's not so great. Um, and most of his businesses report losing millions of dollars year after year. And so um, let's see here. And it also says that within the next four years, more than $300 million in loans, obligations for which he is personally responsible will come due. So that alone is troubling when you have a businessman that's sitting as a president when you're going to be personally responsible for $300 million in loans because then businesses are then, whether they are um, in the United States or overseas, because he's got dealings worldwide, is, you know, you're going to foreclose on a sitting president should he win re-election. It puts people in a, um, in a funky position. So um, so it also says in this article that his properties have become bazaars for collecting money directly from lobbyists, foreign officials, and others seeking FaceTime access or favor. Um, the records for the first time put precise dollar figures on those transactions. Okay. And so it says, hold on, the clip is in the way. Sorry about that. Okay. So... It says in his first two years in the White House, his revenue from abroad totaled $73 million. And um, much of that money was from his golf properties in Scotland and Ireland. Some came from licensing in countries with authoritarian leading leaders, 
Um, so like $3 million from the Philippines and $2.3 million from India and a million dollars from Turkey. He reported uh, paying taxes um, on a number of overseas ventures. So while he paid $750 to the U.S., he paid um, $15,000 to Panama and $145,000 to India, $156,000 to the Philippines. OK, so even though he didn't pay U.S. taxes, he paid foreign taxes. And if you're saying, OK, well, why is he paying foreign taxes? If you check out your IRA, if you check out your own taxes, um, you may be paying foreign taxes, too. So paying taxes to a foreign country is not anything that's necessarily reeks of being illegal. However, the connection with him being president and then doing business in these countries, it, that adds the little funkiness to the whole situation. So um, let's see. So now let's talk about the different types of taxes that he has paid, because that is something that um, the that his attorney is saying, hey, you're not talking about this. So when you're talking about a big corporation, corporations, you know, they pay federal taxes. They also pay state and local taxes. They pay employment taxes. They pay excise taxes. There's all these other taxes besides federal income tax. So a corporation not necessarily paying um, federal income tax doesn't mean they're not paying taxes elsewhere, but the federal tax is what, what, what hits the headlines, right? Um, you know, we talked about Jeff Bezos last year where he didn't pay any taxes on what was like a billion dollars and people hit the roof because he didn't pay, his corporation did not pay federal taxes. Well, he paid all the other taxes though. Okay. So, you know, so it talks about, that um, they analyzed the data. So he paid employee, um, employee compensation. It also has records of cash payments between the president and his businesses, as well as, you know, talking about this audit. So where did this audit come from? So um, back in what, 2008-ish, when everything just kind of went to crap, um, there was... Um, you know, again, one of these bailout type things that <laughs> president at the time was President Barack Obama, mm -hmm, which makes this extra funny right now. So during that time, though, President Obama, he extended that carry back from two years to four years and then um, like up to 50 percent of the taxes you uh, paid for that fifth year. So during that time, Donald Trump had already paid nearly $70 million in taxes, but because of all the, um, the financial drama that went on 2008, 2009, he was able to go back and carry those losses back and get like $72 million in tax refunds and, um, you know, and get that money back. So that, so he did pay those taxes, but he wound up getting it back because of the tax law. Now, people get upset about the tax law. Go get upset with Congress because Congress writes the laws. Just like this, what we're going through right now, Congress is doing this stuff. Congress did it back then too. He just benefited from it because the timing was absolutely impeccable. So he got that 70, he got $70 million back plus $2 million in interest, I think somewhere around there. And so with um, with refunds that high, they require approval. So they would so he would file and get a quick refund, but it it's based on approval. So that is where this audit comes from because they're looking at the legitimacy of this $72 million refund. And it has been going on for years. OK, so I want to say that they reached a, some kind of consensus in 2011, I think. And then something happened and they started looking at some other stuff and it kicked the whole thing off again. So for the president to say he is under audit, yes, he is under audit because they're still fighting about this 72 million dollars. So if he 
if they decide to let this go forward, that everything is cool, then great. He gets to keep that $72 million. But if the, um, the joint committee on taxation, that's what it is. If the joint committee on taxation then says, uh, no, then he'll have to give that $72 million back plus penalties and interest. So now the, but the problem, the kink in all of this is when he became president. For some reason, and what it says in the New York Times is that all of the talks about that suddenly came to a halt. Nobody understands why. And the statute of limitations is kind of getting kicked down the road, kicked down the road. And it's probably because, you know what? He's president right now. And how is that going to look if you got a president that's now got to pay back $100 million to the United States government? That ain't a good look at all. Okay. So it's still not settled, but they're not quite doing anything with it right now. OK, so it's just important to um, in, in important to know that. Um, so, you know, so, yep, he filed for bankruptcy as well. And what it says about the bankruptcy is that during that time, again, they could, you know, it's counted as income. Let's go back. So when you have debt forgiven, it can be counted as income. But there was um, a specific law written during that time. I wasn't a tax person then, y'all. <laughs> but there was a specific law during that time that said, hey, you can defer that um, tax for five years and then spread it out over time, which is what he did. So again, nothing shady. It's, it's, it was just a tax law. Um, it, the article also did say like on the um, subject of Russia, that there was nothing new about any connections in Russia that was not already, um, that was not already revealed. Okay. Already reported. Um, whew, let's see. Then there's, there's so much when it talks about the losses, the losses is what really got me. Um, because it's, 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 it, it's, it's just staggering. Okay. So, um, so the, based on the tax records, it just shows the amount of money that's being lost. It says in 2012, he took out a hundred million dollar mortgage on a commercial space in Trump tower, and he took it all as a payout. And it shows that he's paid more than $15 million in interest, but nothing on the principal. The full $100 million comes due in 2022. In 2013, he withdrew $95.8 million from his, uh, one of his partnerships that he doesn't run that is actually profitable. Um, in 2014, he sold $98 million in stocks and bonds. His biggest... Um, uh, sale in like the last two decades. He sold $54 million in stocks and bonds in 2015. He sold 68.2 million, .2 million in stocks in 2016. His um, financial disclosure reached released in July shows that he has as little as 873,000 securities left to sell. His businesses reported $34.7 million uh, on hand in 2018, which is like down 40%. Um, and the fact that he has personally guaranteed these millions of dollars can force him into personal bankruptcy. Mm, right. So, um, he's personally responsible right now for like $421 million. So, so again, it's a lot. It, it really is a lot. And I, I mean, I've, I'm already like 20 minutes in and I, I've just only touched on the highlights of this thing. Um, also it says that Nike, um, left the left Trump tower in 2018 and they had paid him like $195 million in rent since the nineties. So um, so again, what are the takeaways in this? Cause there's the, the, the New York times said there's going to be more to come with this. Holy guacamole. If it's going to be more of this, I don't know. Uh, my head will probably explode, but people are upset. People are like, so if he's not paying taxes, why do I have to pay taxes? So if you're an employee, 
there's only one way you pay taxes. You have your withholdings, you file. If you overpay, then you get a refund. If you underpay, then you have a tax liability. When you have a business, yes, there are things that you can deduct that you pay a um, at, pay taxes at a lower rate, but that does not mean you don't pay taxes, okay? Um, you know, if you want to go ahead and lose a billion dollars because people like, I want to be like Donald Trump. Well, he, do, do you really want to have this kind of money, that many zeros that you are in debt? If, if that's what you want, I'm not your girl. OK, I, I'm not going to do that. And one of the things that they talked about, too, is, you know, he mentioned, oh, depreciation. Now, I will be the first to tell you depreciation is bad. Depreciation is one of those things that's a non monetary expense. But it says in these articles that in his real estate ventures, they were losing money even before depreciation was factored in. OK, so there is a lot of financial loss that is going on here. And so. So yeah, so when you're talking about you only want to pay $750 in taxes, well, that means you got to lose a lot, a lot, a lot of money and have that carried forward for years. And if that's what you want to do, you can knock yourself out. I ain't that girl. So please understand, don't get upset based on headlines, okay? Because headlines are meant to draw you in, is that you got to learn the tax law and see you know, I, I saw like as back in the election where people were ticked off when as soon as Hillary Clinton Clad, he hadn't paid taxes in 20 years. Every tax person knew he had a net operating loss. The question was, how big was that sucker? Again, almost a billion dollars. So his businesses are losing money. It's not like it's, you know, it's just reporting loss. He's based on the on this report. His businesses really are losing money and he is. It appears that he is using his presidency as a way to boost his celebrity and to make money off of his name. That is how it looks. I am not a court of law. OK, there has been no, you know, only a court of law can decide if he has done something criminal. OK, but based on this and then there's this other property, I'll have to talk about that another time, y'all, because that, again, is just so much. <laughs> OK, it's a lot. Um, the so so the thing about it is, you know, tax planning is so key when you're when you're talking about building and maintaining wealth. Taxes is the biggest bill you will pay in your lifetime, more than your mortgage, more than raising your kids, more than college tuition. Taxes is the biggest bill you will pay. And so this is why you hire tax professionals that can help you mitigate those taxes, that can help you reduce those things. I guarantee you, he got a whole slew of accountants that's specifically designed to help him find ways to not pay taxes. That's what he pays people for. That's what you need to pay people for. You need to pay people for their tax planning services. You cannot reduce your tax bill only talking to your tax person at tax time. Because nine times out of 10, we don't have time to talk to you during tax time because we got a million other people trying to file their taxes. OK, this is why you need to hire your tax professional after tax season to look at your whole plan, your whole tax picture to make a plan for you. This is this is a lot of tax planning. Right. How do you not pay taxes on this kind of money? Well, if you've got if you know about net operating losses, you can use that tax law. If you know about certain tax credits, how does one take advantage take advantage of those tax credits? Because I told you the work that for saving in taxes is done during the year. It's never at tax time. Tax time is too late. So um, so those are the biggest takeaways from this. Understanding that just because someone makes Four hundred million dollars doesn't mean that they're profitable. Okay, revenue versus profit. So when people are talking about how much money they make, next question that you need to ask is how much do you keep? How much profit are you making? That is a key question. Um, and then, like I said, the tax planning fee piece and avoidance versus evasion. Okay, those are the three key topics that I see in all of this. All right. So I hope that um, gives you a little bit of something to chew on. I hope it answers some questions. I'll post the link to this. It took me about an hour to read this this morning because I told you it was a lot. 
okay? Um, and yeah, so that's it for today's episode of Home Biz Tax Talk. We air Monday through Friday, and we'll definitely be coming back when we get the next installment of this series from the New York Times to tell you what's up, all right? So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Bye.